Hi guys, welcome back again to Birdronics TV. In the last video, I made a discussion about the common input to the circuit that will provide a transient input and hence we will have a transient response. In this video, we will talk about more of the step input and the step response of an RC and see the voltage and current during the charging and discharging phase. Given an RC circuit having series connection with the input voltage, we will use a switch to emulate the step input by opening and closing the switch. I made the switch configuration so that it will allow us to have a force input and a pre-wheeling response. Force input will happen when we connect the switch to have a closed loop with the input voltage and a pre-wheeling response when we have a closed loop containing only the RC. In this case, with the force input, our RC will be in the charging state and with the pre-wheeling response, we will have the discharging state. Now, it's time for us to derive the equation. Let's start with the step response of a charging phase. Let us assume that at time less than zero, our switch is not connected to either of the throw terminals of the switch. But at time equal to zero, that is the moment that we close the switch and we will assume an initial condition to the voltage across the capacitor equal to output voltage B sub O. Now we want to get the voltage across the capacitor as our output and that is dependent with the time and we will denote as B sub C as a function of time. In here we will also have current I of T flowing in the circuit when we close the switch. Then we will use the nodal analysis at the output node. In here, I will assume two currents leaving the node, which is the current through the capacitor, I sub C, plus the current through the resistor, I sub R, equivalent to the current entering the node, I of T. So for the capacitor current, we will use the known formula that is equivalent to C dV dt. And with the given direction of the current through the resistor, we can say that the current through the resistor is the output voltage minus the input voltage divided by R. And that is equivalent to our current entering the node I of T. But in this case, at the output node, I of T entering the node is equivalent to zero. Transposing the resistor current on the right side and multiplying both sides by one over C, we will have this equation. Now by cross multiplication, we can derive a variable separable differential equations. So what we can do in this equation is we can integrate both sides. And on the left side of the equation, we have the form integral of du over u, which is ln of u, uh, with u equivalent to the output voltage minus the input voltage. And on the right side, I can take out the negative one over c as a constant and I will be left with the integral of dt, which is t plus a constant. Now we have to find the value of constant. And remember, at time equals to zero, we assume that our initial condition, which is the output across the capacitor, is equivalent to output B sub O. So that our constant is equivalent to ln of the initial output voltage B sub O minus the input voltage. So now we can put back the value of our constant into our equation. Then we can group the like terms of natural logarithm and by applying the properties of logarithm, we will end up with this equation. Now we can use both sides of the equation as the exponent of E so that it will cancel out the natural logarithm. And for the manipulation of our formula, we will end up with the voltage across the capacitor is equivalent to the input voltage plus the quantity initial output voltage minus the input voltage multiplied with E raised to the negative T all over RC. This formula is the general equation that we will use for the voltage across the capacitor including 
the initial conditions of the output voltage. Now, in the formula, you will see a term E raised to the negative T all over RC. It is a decay function with respect to the ratio of T all over RC with RC as our time constant factor. So, we will call now the product of RC as time constant denoted by the symbol tau. Okay guys, if our initial conditions V sub O is equal to zero, at time equal to zero, then our general formula will be reduced to the voltage across the capacitor equivalent to the voltage input multiplied with 1 minus e to the negative all over RC, which is a more familiar formula that we know. Given the formula for the capacitor with initial conditions equal to zero, we can use that equations to derive the current for the capacitor. Simply by using the capacitor current formula, IC is equals to C dV dt. So by taking the derivative of the capacitor voltage, we will now have the current equation for the capacitor, which is equal to B over R multiplied with E to the negative T all over RC. So guys, now that we have both the formula for the output voltage and the output current given the RC circuits, let us now observe how the RC circuit respond to a step input and see the plots of current and voltage waveforms. Okay guys, I just displayed again the voltage and current equations that we have derived and will be used for the analysis of the charging state. I also prepared a table to record the values at different time pace and this time pace are time less than zero, time equal to zero, time equal to infinity, time greater than zero but less than infinity. And we will observe how much time do we need for us to reach the steady state from transient state. Just for an example, I took an arbitrary value of resistor and capacitor to have one second time constant. And of course, the easiest way is to have 1 ohm and 1 farad respectively. Again, this is just an example guys. Okay, let's start at time less than 0. In here, we don't have yet the step input. Therefore, both voltage and the current of the capacitor is equal to 0. The next time phase is time equal to 0. In here, we have the step input. But the exponential term in here will be equal to 1. So the term inside the bracket will be equal to zero, hence the capacitor voltage is zero. This is also supported by the fact that the capacitor does not allow abrupt change in voltage. This is one of the characteristics of the capacitor that you must remember. For the current, we will have the maximum level equivalent to the voltage divided by R because the exponential is equal to one. Now, you may ask what happened to the capacitor. The capacitor at the time of step is short-circuited. For the meantime, let us leave it like that, but it is a very good concept to understand related to the rich frequency content of the step input and how the capacitor reacts with frequencies. Okay, the next time phase is the time equal to infinity. In here, based on the formula, the voltage to the capacitor is equal to the voltage input because the exponential term is zero. The current on the other hand is equal to zero because the exponential term is zero. In here, we can say that the capacitor is just like an open circuit as manifested by the zero current flow. Okay, for time greater than zero but less than infinity, the rise time in voltage will follow the factor 1 minus e to the negative t all over rc and the current will have a decay factor which is e raised to the negative t all over rc now the question is how much time we need to reach the steady state from the transient state i prepared a simple illustration to show you how the time constant will come into play as a factor of reaching the steady state we all heard the five time constant is the time needed to assume that we are in the steady state, but let us see if it is true. Okay, showing you is an interactive waveform where we can play with the time and we have an interval of one tau. 
As we slide with the time, there are two points that will also track the value of voltage and current. You will also see in terms of percentage how close the voltage output with the input voltage and the percentage value of the current as we increase with the time axis. Okay, let's start with time equal to 1 tau. You will see in here that the output voltage is around 63.21% of the input voltage and the current is decaying with 36.79% of the maximum current. At time equal to 2 tau, output voltage is around 86.47% of the input. Current is around 13.53% of the maximum current. At time equal to 3 tau, voltage output is around 95% of the input and current is around 4.98% of the maximum current. At 4 tau, our output now is 98.17% of the input and current is around 1.83%. At 5 tau in here, you will see that our output is around 99.33% of the input, almost equal to the input. And the current is decaying with only 0.67% of the maximum current. Okay guys, based on the value that we got, we have realized that at 5 tau, the capacitor is already full charged and with 99.33% of the input, we can safely assume that the pipe time constant is the time needed to reach the steady state. Okay guys, we are done with the charging state. Let's move on to the discharging state. We will now turn on the switch from the force input to the freewheeling setup so that we will have a loop that has a resistor and capacitor only. Now the input voltage is disconnected with the circuit and we will only be left by voltage in the capacitor as a source to our circuit. Therefore, whatever is the voltage value across the capacitor will serve as our initial voltage V sub O. With that, we will have the formula for discharging voltage of the capacitor equivalent to the voltage V sub O multiplied with E raised to the negative T all over RC. Let us use this circuit with the time constant equal to 1 to exercise the discharge response. We will assume that the capacitor is fully charged and it means that we have waited at least 5 time constant. So that at time of switch on or time equal to 0, our initial condition, the voltage in the capacitor V sub O is equal to our input voltage. So now with the steady state, our capacitor voltage value for the discharge is equivalent to the voltage input multiplied with E raised to the negative T all over RC. For the current, we will take again the derivative of the voltage by using the formula for capacitor current, IC is equal to C dB dt. And the resulting equation will be IC equal to negative B in all over R multiplied with E raised to the negative T all over RC. Let us plot again to the table what will happen if I have a time equal to zero, time equal to infinity, and time greater than zero but less than infinity. At time equal zero, the voltage across the capacitor is equal to the input voltage and the current is equivalent to negative B in all over R. At time equal to infinity, you will see that our exponential term is equal to zero, therefore both voltage and the current is now zero. At time greater than zero but less than infinity, both our voltage and current will decay exponentially by a factor of E raised to negative T all over RC. Okay guys, from the table, you will observe that both the voltage and current will now decay to zero. You will also realize that the capacitor voltage polarity remains the same, but the current is now negative and it means there is a change in the direction of the flow of current. As the time increases towards infinity, both the voltage and current will be equal to zero and it means the capacitor is fully discharged. 
let us again observe the voltage and current waveform plots using the same circuit with time constant equal to 1. We will then again increase the time by the interval of 1 tau and see how the value of voltage and current decays with the time. So let's start with 1 tau and you will see both the voltage and current decays around 36.79% of their maximum value. And with 2 tau, it further decays with 13.53% of their maximum value. So as going to 3 tau with only 4.98% and 4 tau, we have 1.83% only. And with the 5 tau, we only have 0.67% of their maximum value or almost equal to zero. It means that at 5 tau, our capacitor is fully discharged. Okay guys, before we end this video, I just want to give you a summary of what we have discussed. We completed the formula derivation and the response analysis of RC circuits for a step input. Observe that 5 time constant is needed to assume in steady state from the transient state. Realize in charging state that the capacitor at step input is shorted and will act as an open at time greater than 5 time constant. Voltage is equal to 0 and current at maximum at time of the step input. Voltage at maximum and current equal to 0 at time greater than 5 time constant. Realize also that in discharging state that the capacitor Voltage and current both decays to zero. Voltage does not change polarity but the current reverses its direction. Okay guys, that's all for this video and thank you for your support to Bertronics TV. Guys, always remember this. Electronics is made easy with ECE. Bye!